Welcome to the, this is technically the fourth episode. I have not released the third one, but if you're watching this one, then you've probably already seen the third one. Um, but this episode is a very special one uh, because this person is, if you, if you know her, she's like, call it like a lighthouse. I call it like, honestly, like a second mom. Um, and I remember I've known her for uh, 10 plus years now. And then her and my mom actually finally met a couple of years ago. So that was really cool. But um, we are here with Seal Weatherman. And she's a really awesome, awesome person at the Y and also in life. So I just want to kind of bring her, we'll talk. And so, Seal, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Happy Monday. Exactly, exactly. So, Seal, yeah, so this, again, is an opportunity just to kind of like, you know, just to be able to talk a little more about you. So, I mean, just, just let us know. Of course, I know what you do, but can you let us know who you are and kind of what you do? Yeah, I am. Um... My name is Seal. It's short for Cecilia. It's like sealing without the ing. <laughs> and um, I work for the YMCA. I've always worked for the YMCA. I'm on like year 40 now. Uh -huh. um, and specifically the YMCA of the Triangle. And I'm in the learning and leadership development part, department, which is sort of a dream job for me. Mm. So and that's we'll, who I am and what I do. Nice. And we'll, we'll be getting into it more, but like... Um, before we kind of go to what you do now and how everything's and how you've gotten there. So I guess, where are you from and how was, you know, family upbringing and, and kind of what got you to this position? Sure. Um, I was born in Virginia, grew up in North Carolina in a small town north of Winston-Salem called Pilot Mountain. And um, I'm one of six girls, so my parents had six daughters, <laughs> um, which um, made our life a little bit hectic and exactly. crazy and, and always, always, always fun. Mm -hmm. um, I'm number two of, of the six, and the um, time span between the oldest and the youngest is 18 years. So that's a little bit about, you know, where I come from. Um, at an early age, my parents sent us all to summer camp, and it just happened to be a YMCA camp um, called mm -hmm. Camp Sea Fair on the coast. And originally, I thought it was just because they were so incredibly generous. Um, but then I discovered it was probably more about getting us out of the house <laughs> for extended periods of time, um, in addition to like the generosity. Right. So my YMCA experience started when I was nine years old. Wow. And I think that's like a six, I'm trying to imagine, I'm a family of four and I'm the youngest. And I remember when there was a point where we were all in the house together and it's like, I look at my mom now and I'm like, I have no idea how you did that. Like that's, that's like, it's a like chaos everywhere kind of happening or controlled chaos. Yeah. Um, and so you said you went to Camp Seafair. Now for those of you who do not know, Camp Seafair is a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and what was your experience there? I mean, there's literally, I mean, you can describe it, but there's like countless things to do. So how was, how was that going there? Yeah, as a child, it just felt really, really big. Mm -hmm. But um, camp is organized in a way, and, and all overnight camps are organized um, and with great strategy and intention, of course, to make it feel like a smaller community. It's, it's interesting, the, the first person I met when I arrived at camp um, was my cabin counselor, mm -hmm. who later became a, a mentor and a role model and my children's pediatrician. Wow. So she was, you know, I met her when she was 19 and I was nine. Mm -hmm. And then she was present at the birth of both my children and wow. has cared for them all of these years. So um, camp's a really special place where special friendships are made that have the potential to, to last a lifetime, at least for me, that, that was the case. And I know that's the case for many others. Mm -hmm. Do you, was it more, I know you kind of, you learned it was more of an opportunity to, you know, to get out of the house and not be cooped up in there. Um, but what do you think are some of the things that kind of helped you apart, you know, from meeting, from meeting a person? How, what are some things that you did at that time that kind of helped you and guide you to where you are right now? Yeah, so camp is a great place to learn um, new skills. Mm -hmm and to meet people from not just around the country, but, but really around the world, because we have a, um, we serve the international community as well. And so to, to try new things and to build confidence and competence in those things, um, it really leads to self-reliance and independence mm -hmm. in a way that I think is really important in a young person's life. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's really cool, because I think it's, 
especially like when, when I used to work at, uh, you know, track out and like going and taking kids to see fair and then also like hearing stories, like you just, it's just amazing, like being put in an environment where of course you're not at home. So like, that's a big, you know, that's a big shift for some people, but then being able to just meet someone who, whose life is literally completely different from you. And like, you can be able to learn from that. And then just like, I, th I just think it's cool just to be able to ha have the opportunity, not just only from the campers, but even the workers and just the stories that, that, that happen. Um, so, you know, kind of after, you know, going to Seafair and, you know, did you go there like countless times, you know, not countless, but did you go there like numerous times or did you end up working there? Or how did that, you know, what happened after? Yeah. So I started, you know, as a camper mm -hmm. and then became a staff trainee or what they call it at Seafair, a silt. Mm -hmm. Um, and from there, a junior counselor, and I went on to, to work in a leadership capacity um, throughout high school and college. Okay. And so it, it spanned many, many, many years. I felt like every time I went to, to Seafair, I, it was a lot like going home mm -hmm. um, for the summer. In fact, I, I went to a school that was year round, a college that was year round, and mm -hmm. I had to officially drop out of school every year for three months so that I could be <laughs> at Camp Seafair in the summer and then re-enroll it was it was quite a process but it was it was totally worth it that's awesome <laughs> that's really cool what what, what college did you go to in Royal like what was your was your uh studies yeah i um i went to a school in santa barbara california called wow. brooks institute mm -hmm. and i it's a professional photography school and i majored in undersea technology which means um i specialized in fish portraits Nice. What what drew you? That's awesome. Well, like what drew you to that? That's very specific and like niche down. <laughs> it is. Um, well, that that's an interesting story. You know, I never considered myself academically gifted. I went to a very challenging um, girls boarding school, Salem Academy, mm -hmm. um, and I while I was successful there socially, mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of friendships, academically, I I really felt. Um, like I was not successful. And then I went on to a, a girls college in a women's college in Virginia um, with the plan of becoming a, a dentist. That was my goal. I really wow. wanted to be a, a dentist. And uh -huh. um, so then after my D in chemistry and my D minus in organic chemistry, which I really should have failed, uh -huh. the professor said that she would give me a D minus just to get me out of her class because she really didn't <laughs> want me. That's awesome. As a student anymore. And so I remember after that, um, that year in, in um, organic chemistry, walking on the beach with my mother and we were just talking and I was expressing frustration that maybe I had chosen, you know, the wrong profession to pursue because it was so challenging for me and it, it wasn't, you know, I didn't feel motivated and inspired. Instead, I felt just sort of drained and, and uh, in many ways, like a failure. Mm -hmm. And so she, she was so cool. She was the coolest mom ever. She still is. Uh -huh. um, but she just, you know, she asked me as we were walking, well, what do you love? And I said, well, you know, I love the water. And we were walking along the beach, so that made sense. And I was always a swimmer growing up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I, I really, in many ways, felt more comfortable in the water than I did outside. Outside. <laughs> And, uh, and I love photography. And she, you know, she said, well, there's your answer. And it, it took me a minute to catch up with her. Uh, mm -hmm. But I did a lot of research and I found that there was one school in North America that was accredited mm -hmm. where I could actually get a college degree and major in underwater photography. That's, and that's wow. how that started. That, <laughs> I, mean, I think it's, that's amazing because it's like, it's not like, um, I just like the story of how it was because it's not like straightforward. It's kind of like this way, then that way, then kind of coming around. But I feel like honestly, those are the best kind of like stories to tell because when someone, they might see like, oh, she got out of high school and went straight to that. But it's like you detoured so far that you kind of had to come around. Um, so you know, after graduate, well, actually, first of all, shift from North Carolina, East Coast to West Coast, that, how was yeah. that different? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was really <laughs> different um, in, a, in an amazing way. You know, I, growing up in a house full of girls and going to all girls summer camps and all girls boarding school and all girls women's college, mm -hmm. you know, this was my first jumping into sort of a different kind of, of life. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, and in such a beautiful place. And in that time, Santa Barbara was still considered, you know, a, a smaller town, mm -hmm. it, it, nothing like it is today. But it just, um, it was, it's probably one of the prettiest places I've ever been. Wow. And just to wake up every morning and the weather's perfect. Right. Every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> it's not yeah. like North Carolina when it's like yeah. nice every week. Yeah. <laughs> And I would ride my bike to, to school. And um, while I was there, I was working for the YMCA. Mm -hmm. So I would ride my bike to, to the Y and lifeguard and teach, um, teach swim lessons and then, you know, be in school the rest of the time. And, and every day I woke up so excited and, and inspired about mm -hmm. just everything that was around me, the beauty that surrounded me and the incredible opportunity my parents had given me. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, and with that, I know you said how you, you're waking up every day inspired since you found something to love, um, and this is something we, you know, we'll still, still keep talking about, but how important is that to you and for others to really find something to, there's twofold, like we're told find something that you love doing, but then there's some people who feel like they don't love anything. Well, like, what do you think is kind of helped you to kind of go on that path? Yeah, well, there are a couple of things around that. So waking up, I'm happy is something that's really important to me. And, and my parents would always tell people that I was their happiest baby. They would, they would wake me up in the middle of the night, bring their friends in, wake me up in the middle of the night just to see me smile. And I would smile and, and coo and talk and then go right back to sleep. Um, so that's sort of how I came into this world. And, and so anytime I wake up and I'm not happy or I don't feel this, this sense of, excitement or inspiration for the day, I know that something's off, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I would um, tell people to, to really, um, instead of, of looking for joy and looking for happiness, and those things are really, really important, but look, look within yourself, mm -hmm. um, to deep within yourself, to what it is that, um, who, who you are and what it is that really makes you tick and then align, you know, your choices with those things about you that are precious. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in many ways, you know, it's like integrity. You're, it, when your um, choices align with your values, then you stand in integrity. And so when your choices align with, with your values and where your heart is, you also have a, a greater chance of, of joy and happiness. Yeah. So, Wow. That is like a timestamp, right? That was, that was amazing. And that's, I, there was, I, I feel like I'm the same way with you just cause with growing up, like, you know, just like the, the um, learning from my parents and then those people around me, just like the whole, just opportunities. Like, I just feel like in life, like I've gotten a lot of opportunities and everybody does yeah. have a lot of opportunities, but it's like what you, you know, what you do with them. But just like what you just said, like waking up and just being like, there's sometimes where I'm smiling, people are like, man, like, why are you smiling so much? And I'm like, well, it's a small, I always say it every time, like if, if you're having a bad day, just remember that you woke up today. And that's, that should honestly just put a big smile on your face. So. I really annoy my, my colleague because uh -huh. I walk in on Monday mornings and I'm really happy to, <laughs> to be at work. And this, you know, this time of being secluded and isolated mm -hmm. is, is really fascinating for me, but I know that there are some colleagues of mine who are are kind of excited not to see me on Monday mornings. <laughs> because <laughs> because <you're all> <laughs> it's annoying to be that happy on a Monday morning. Exactly, and it's not like without coffee, without anything. You're just it's just natural. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so where you know we you know we've gone we've gone from North Carolina to California. The weather is amazing. There's beaches. It's about so you're being able to like walk on the beach, kind of like a movie scene. Um, and I guess, you know, you, you finish, you know, you finished there and then did you come back to North Carolina? Did you go back to Virginia? Like where, what transition throughout your career from going to your degree to, you know, kind of coming into North Carolina? Sure. I, I graduated. Um, I won't tell you the date because then you'll it's okay, it's top secret. realize how really old I am. Yeah. But I graduated and, and stayed for a year to work on an exhibit for the Channel Islands National Park. There were a group of students had taken that on and it was a, a permanent exhibit that stayed up for 20 years. So I guess the definition of permanent is 20 years. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I got to see it go up. And then 20 years later, I went back to visit and I got to see it come down. Mm -hmm. And um, it was something I was really proud of. But during all of that, once the exhibit was complete, I got a call from our now CEO, mm -hmm. Doug McMillan, who, who essentially said, you know, I, um, I know how much you love camp and I know how much you love the wine. And I've been working for the Y in Santa Barbara all throughout college. Mm -hmm. I've got a job for you. You're overqualified, um, but it's a foot in the door. Mm -hmm. um, I'll pay you $10,000 a year. And um, I can't help you with any of your moving expenses. <laughs> and so I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Wow. Yeah. And I, really, I just, I just trusted completely in him mm -hmm. and his insight. And, you know, I said, you know, if you think this is a foot in the door um, and I know uh, I've always wanted to work for the Y, then I'll take the foot in the door and make the most of it. And so it, it came to me, I didn't pursue it at the same time I had worked part-time for the Y for so many years that it mm -hmm. made a lot of sense for me. Right. And I think it's it's two things of what you just said, and it's funny when you're just talking about the, like the opportunity. Like I'm noticing there's like a pattern of like whenever opportunity comes, you're taking it. Like whether of course yeah. if it's something that's good and it's aligning with you, but you're taking it and then working within it. But then also you've had that consistency of you were still working at the last thing that you loved, and you're actually doing what you loved, and that kind of you know the domino effect kind of came up. In other words, what is it called? The um, compounding effect. Um, and so I has been so generous to me They, you know, I've, they've offered me so many different opportunities. So, you know, originally I was a, an administrative assistant in the adult programs office, mm -hmm. working with uh, adult programs and our, our swim team. Mm -hmm. um, with every opportunity that they've presented, I've pretty much said yes. Um, they invited me to start our marketing department. So I got to spend. Oh, wow. You know, I know that. Years. Yeah, I got to spend 10 what? years as uh, um, the leader of marketing communications. And then I was given the opportunity to step into financial development. So I get got to lead our We Built People Fine. campaign yeah. for 11 years. And after that, into operations. And then after that, into branch work. And then mm. after that, into learning and leadership development. I, I just, I, I don't know the last time I filled out a job application or had a resume. I, I think mm -hmm. it was probably when I was um, a teenager. Wow. And it's like you, it's, I've noticed you like, you just immerse yourself. Like, of course, like when the opportunity comes, you just extremely dive in. That's funny. Cause also you like swimming, you, you dive into everything and like how, you know, why, why do you do that? Like why, when you, when you're giving something to do a task, big or small, little, however it is, um, picking up trash. I remember when we were at the uh, Families On Challenge, I remember you came, you came, you walked in, you said hi, and then I remember, I think it was like for like, I swear it felt like two, three hours, I just, you were just walking around just picking up trash and just kind of immer immersing yourself when you easily could have just been spectating or doing et cetera. So, you know, why? Why do you kind of immerse yourself 110% into everything you do? Yeah, for a long time, I, I didn't really know the answer to that question. I, I know that um, my father instilled in all of us a really strong work ethic. Um, I, do, I do give him tremendous credit for that. He put us to work in his, his store mm -hmm. um, when we were in middle school, and that's, that's what we did on the weekends and holidays, and we worked. Mm -hmm. So a really strong work ethic. But um, I think over the last five to seven years, I've really spent a lot of time learning about my my strengths you know what really makes me tick and um and i and i use gallup um the clifton strengths yes. through through gallup of course yeah. and um one of my strengths my number one strength is maximizer mm -hmm. and so um, driven by maximizer i really want to take something and make it better mm -hmm. right so i'm i'm not going to be content being a spectator for long. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to find a need and contribute for the purpose of making something better than it already is. So Families on Challenge is, is just a, a really small example, but I got there, it was super well organized. Mm -hmm. Everything was just humming, you know, um, everybody was doing what they were supposed to be doing and the folks who were leading it had it. They totally had it, and I was trying to find a place where I could 
make it just a, a 1% better. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I saw some trash on the ground and decided, okay, I can pick up trash and that would make it a little bit better. And mm -hmm. that's what I can contribute. And I, I love to walk. And so I walked with a bag yeah. <laughs> to talk with people. Exactly. And like what I, people watching, like literally, uh, cause we were at different stations and I remember I was at yeah. the, I was at the YMCA like pinwheel station where people would come and they would advise this. And then I remember I went to different stations and I feel like I, I saw her at one station like across this way and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna walk, walk this way. And by the time I'm getting there, she's already there. And I'll just be like, I remember walking with people and we're like, Seal must be like a superwoman. I think she's like really, really fast. She just doesn't want anybody <laughs> to know. Cause then she'd look and she'd be like, oh, hey guys. Like she's just letting us know like, hey, we just got here before you, just you, you guys keep going. Um, and. I, second thing with that is the strength finder test that she was talking about, or just any of it. I, I had the opportunity to get opportunities. That's going to be the key word. To, to, uh, it it to, always to, is, right? Exactly. No, it is. Yeah. It's, um, I, I got to take that test and really find out a lot of different things. And then I've also, a lot of the stuff, I know some people find it like woo woo and airy fairy, but it's a lot of, a lot of people, what I've come to find, even with talking to different individuals with like when people say, I want, let's say with fitness, I want to get to a certain body type, I want to get to a certain size, et cetera. You know, they do the actions, do the actions, but then they're not getting the results. But one thing I found out, like you could have the best trainer, the best supplements, the best food, but if like your mindset is really not switched towards that goal, then it's not gonna work. So like personally for me, I had these certain goals where I wanted to do, but I found out like the actions were at a thousand percent, but my mentality was honestly at like, not that much, but after taking these extra like, finder tests, um, I think it was it was the Gallup, and I took the um, sixteen personality, and then they have like a, like a paid version that you just pay like twenty nine dollars, and it gives you an in depth amount. And I still have it. And I take notes, and it just made so much sense because you find out why you do certain things, mm -hmm. why you don't do certain things, and why you're not doing certain things that could be helping you, and just like the way you work. And so I just think it's like, I, and also reading books too. Like I, I high school, I went from reading one to two books a year to like now I read like three or four a month but oh, it's right. and it's just like I bought it I bought a Kindle and it's the greatest thing like even though I love physical books but um the opportunity really just like honestly unlock yourself but really working on yourself is honestly the key um but I get you know kind of going with that and through all the roles that you've had what are some you know what are some challenges that you've had to overcome as opposed to say like one one to three challenges that you've, that you've had um, and how you overcame them. Yeah, so, you know, their life is full of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and I can think of, of several. One is, you know, I grew up at, in a time, um, I grew up in the South mm -hmm. and I grew up with um, conservative parents. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't, it didn't occur to me that our family was racist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, as a child, I didn't, um, I wasn't able to see that or understand that. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, as I look back, I can see how that was really very much part of our existence and, and um, not through any fault of, of mine um, or even my family's. It was just, it was a part of being alive during those times. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember, um, I remember one of my sisters, mm -hmm. a girl, we all, and, and, um, but my father wouldn't allow her to come over to our house to play mm -hmm. and wouldn't allow my sister to go to her house to play because she was black. Mm -hmm. And um, my sister ran away from home to, to move in with the Jessops. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bold move. <laughs> Which was like, yeah. we were all like, whoa. That's like a check. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. go, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, that was a real wake up call for my father. And, and the rules changed after that. But it wasn't until I went to, um, REI, which not the store, but racial equity Institute that I realized how much my life was built on this, um, this thing called privilege and uh, the the privilege I have had as a white person 
in in our world and and so that was a really big challenge for me to accept mm -hmm. that you know i grew up with a ton of privilege i i'd always said you know it was hard work and drive that got me where i am and that had led to my success and, and that's really not true i mean i've got those things right yeah. but yeah. it was it was complete privilege mm -hmm. you know i had the opportunity to be in the places to meet the people who could then extend to me opportunities that not everybody gets. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was a, a really challenging thing for me to embrace, mm -hmm. but I've, I also feel enriched by it so that I can um, really, as a, as a purpose and as part of this organization, um, think about inclusion at a whole new level. And, and fortunately, that's part of my job, diversity and inclusion is, is an area of responsibility that that i hold and and we have tremendous leaders who are driving the work right. of course i'm i'm not um they are the 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 feet in the fire that move the work forward i just have the privilege of of saying yes this is important we're going to make sure it's important in, in the organization mm -hmm. so i think that that that's a challenge another challenge that um because I'm a product of my time is that I grew up in, in a environment where children were, you know, um, don't speak unless spoken to, mm -hmm. and especially female mm -hmm. children, right? Mm -hmm. Stand here, look pretty, keep your mouth shut, right. and um, uh, make sure that, you know, you respect elders and you respect people in authority. So I, I really didn't feel the opportunity or the invitation to question or push back or to impose my my thoughts when they were contrary to whatever it, it was that was being discussed and I found that in early in my career that that was not working for me it was working against me mm. and so this whole idea of of getting really comfortable and confident in expressing views mm -hmm. that were different from the views that were held mm -hmm. Um, that was really hard for me. I mean, I had no trouble thinking independent thoughts, right? right? But being able to articulate those and stand in those and be okay with um, with not being right, right? That was that was really hard for me. Hmm. And that's and that's something that I feel like even some people go through right now, where they have like certain like they have certain things they might want to say to someone, whether it's like a significant other or whether it's like a boss or someone, but they don't know like it's like that mental battle or the the good and the evil like on the, on the shoulder like you should say it you should not say it and then they end up with probably one of the things that uh, i fear most is like regret but like you good regret not bad regret but like regret on you know just again you said it like you never know you know trying to just say hi to people when they're like today when i was running and walking after working out just you know just saying hi to people of course some people are like trying to stay away from you and everything like that but just taking an opportunity just to say hi to people um just because i mean and it's not to get anything but you really you know we've learned at the live like you really never know what is going on in someone's life and just that simple like wow i love that plate which i really do i love that painting in the background but i love the painting that might just be like the sugar to someone where you might make them day like you, you might make their day because maybe they've just had a long day um so you know with you like where have you found your comfortability or your your drive to necessarily speak your mind but of course not like shouting from the mountaintop but how have you found that to really help you in your career your life as a mother yeah i think it's just part of the the maturing process so you know the older we we get, the more wisdom we hopefully accumulate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but but it does go back to really when you boil everything down to its simplest form. We are all human beings, right? And and we all um, have things that we are wrestling with, mm -hmm. that we're passionate. Hopefully, that we're passionate about right. and. Um, fears that we we carry with us mm -hmm. and you're right you never know what somebody yeah. is going through and so one of the things one of the the talents that I have is that I'm a really good listener mm -hmm. you know I can I can tune in to individuals and I can I can um, I like to say it sounds kind of woo-woo but mm -hmm. I can read energy mm, I, love, I, I agree with you <laughs> I can 
I can step into a room and read the energy of the room. I can step into a conversation and read the energy with people, you know, and it, uh, I think that um, there's a book called Click and it's, mm -hmm. it's about the science of relationships. And in the, in the book, they talk a little bit about people who are high self-monitors. So I'm a high self-monitor. I can step into any situation, read the energy and adapt myself. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if I'm step into a situation where there's a lot of high energy and a lot of volume, then I can adjust and, you know, my body language can be a little bit bigger. My voice can be a little bit stronger. Whereas if I step into more of a somber, you know, environment, then I can adjust that too. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm listening with my eyes. I'm listening with my ears mm -hmm. and I love, I'm just fascinated by people and what makes them tick. Mm -hmm. So I, then that's a genuine interest of right. mine. I want to know, you know, who you are and what's going on with you and, and how you're feeling about life and, and how is it that I can support you in figuring out how you want to move forward mm -hmm. in, in life. I mean, I feel like that's my, that's my calling. So, um, you know, becoming a coach with Gallup um, has been such wow. an incredible gift and opportunity that the, that the YMCA has given me. So I get yeah. to work with individuals and teams and organizations to discover, you know, where they are, where they want to be, and how to support them in figuring out how to get there. Right. So I'm, I'm not providing solutions or answers to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm helping people discover, you know, where they want to go and how they can see themselves getting there and then through encouragement um, and coaching, you know, just celebrating their journey and their, and when they reach their destination. That is amazing. And if you, I know if you're watching this, like even you'll notice I like scooted in even as she's talking, but she really does have this, like, you know, when certain people just walk in the room, you kind of get that, like, oh, I think Seal is here, or you just kind of get that feeling. And like, she really does have that ability. And it's not like, oh, Seal is here, we have to like straighten up. But it's like, there's a sense of like assurement and how can I, I don't even know how to say, yeah, sure. Just there's a sense of just like everything's okay, like relax. And even when she's talking to you, you can be talking about anything, but having the ability that she has of being able to come into a conversation and not. You know, the, you know, there's people who come into conversations to take and, you know, to turn it to, oh, yeah, this is what I was doing, da, 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 this is what I was doing. But, like, she has the ability to really come into a conversation and just, like, boost it up even more. Um, and just, like, watching her do that. Like, I remember I've sat, I can't remember what training she was. I remember she sat in our group when we were, like, breaking and eating lunch. And it was just, like, she entered in the group, just energy just got, like, the Duracell with the little bunny that kind of hits everything. So, it was just the energy of the group just went up. And, like, the entire time, people would try to ask things about her but she would just be able to just re be able to, to kind of like turn it around and really invest in them and honestly for me that's ability to like I like with, with her just learning about people is just so intriguing and so important like how we tick and I psychology is one of the best classes I've ever taken like these are my lead books one of my favorite books is um how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie and that's just like a, such a great book because it, it's old teachings but it's really just how to talk to people and really understanding that you need to be more invested into them. Um, so the next one I wanted to ask you, I want to ask you a little, uh, this one's a little fun one. Okay. So okay. it's a crazy one. It's okay. So, all right. So this today, you, you know, you finish this interview, um, you know, you're kind of going about your day and then someone knocks on your door and you learn that you've won um, exactly one point six million dollars so it's just like you are you are a winner of 1.6 million dollars um and it's it's already been taxed so like this is 100 percent what it is wow. and you have it so like let's you have it what would you do with it and and why yeah it's a very specific number 1.6 1.6 yeah what, what a fun number exactly <laughs> right what a, a fun opportunity you know well the the first thing i do is i think about okay what am i where can I do the most good, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and how can the most good align with what's most important to me? Mm -hmm. So there, there are a couple of things um, that would be my go-to. Um, one is I, have a, I really have a soft place in my heart, a, a 
place that's reserved for families in crisis um, because I, um, I myself have been a member of a family in crisis mm -hmm. and I've had close friends and relatives who have also been um, part of a family in crisis. So I have a, a, a special place in my heart for families in crisis. And I also have a special place in my heart for recovering addicts. Mm -hmm. um, addiction is something that I've learned a lot about over the last decade or so, maybe even a, a longer through experience with friends and with family mm -hmm. and, um, and with myself. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, that if I had the opportunity to invest um, funds like that in an effort to support families in crisis and mm -hmm. invest in recovering um, addicts, mm -hmm. Um, I would, and I would really do it. Honestly, this is, this is not a commercial for Gallup, but, but I would really do it through Strengths Finder mm -hmm. to, to help people, you know, just like you were talking about, to help people understand what it is, the, the talent that they possess mm -hmm. and how to harness it and use it to achieve whatever it is that's most important to them. So, you know, with people who are, are wrestling with crisis or addiction and their, their goal and their um, desire to be whole and healthy again, mm -hmm. right? Um, if, if you understand what your innate talents are, what your strengths are, and how to harness those and how to um, use those to take those important steps forward, mm -hmm. then that can be so incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what all the ins and outs of, of creating a business model around that. I don't know what all of that means, but... Mm -hmm my intent would be to um, to help others see and realize their potential for greatness mm -hmm. um, see believe achieve <laughs> yeah yeah that's the I, you know somebody and i think it all goes back to to childhood you know somebody saw something in me mm -hmm. right um somebody saw something in you mm -hmm. i saw stuff in you <laughs> that, um, <laughs> that was just so obvious to me that you you were destined for such great things and and somebody saw that in me and invested in that and so that's that's what i want to be for others mm -hmm. i see so much greatness so much potential so much possibility in in all human beings but especially those who desire um and are willing to commit to to the hard work to create positive change mm -hmm. Again, uh, if you're teaching everybody right now, I think it's going to be having just like a notebook of just like notes. And by the way, I did take a note of the book. You said it was Click. Is that what you said it was called? Click. Click. Yeah. Uh, Click. That, yeah. I'll, that's definitely going to be um, next on the read. Um, and it's and, an easy read. I love an easy read. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. It just, it, uh, it describes the, you know, the five components that go into making it possible for you know, those moments where you meet somebody and you just click, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. And it feels like, wow, I'm just completely, um, uh, I completely understand this person and, and where they're coming from. And it's like, I've known this person forever, but we've just met. Right. You know, so it's the science behind that. Yeah, no, that's definitely, I, I there was a recent book I was reading. Uh, I'm still going to finish it, but that book, I'm going to get it in a physical copy. It's Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And that's a it's a really good book, and I I love Marcus Aurelius, um, Seneca. Who else? Uh, another one is uh, Nicola Machiavelli. But the book I was that's a book that I looked at. Even though you can highlight on Kindle, I just had to stop, and I was like, this is a physical like this is a physical book where I have to be writing like everything down, or else you know just to be able to retain it. Um, Again, you have to turn the page. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Turning the page is, <laughs> is just you know I'm so. It's old just that sensation, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, you know, how do you continue to learn? At, well, <laughs> yeah, like how do you continue to learn at you know at, at where you are and what you're doing and everything that you've overseen and literally having, you know, a great number, you know, like an experience throughout different fields of what you've done. And so how do you just continue to learn um, to you know to get you know to where you are? Well, I mentioned that Maximizer was my number one talent or my number one strength. Mm -hmm. My number two is learner, <laughs> which means that I, I just love to learn mm -hmm. for the purpose of learning. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So I've just had this insatiable curiosity about things and especially about people and, and what makes them tick and, um, you know, and, and what is it that I can acquire in terms of knowledge and experience to, to be able to better serve others. And, and so I'm always learning. I mean, every day is a, a learning opportunity. And I, I um, you know, at, at some point when you're an insecure whatever, I guess teenager, maybe the, the need to be right mm -hmm. is, is pretty powerful, but I got way past that. <laughs> In fact, I'm a hundred percent confident that I am wrong at least 50% of the time. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Right. Right. Um, but there's always something to learn and whether it's, uh, whether it's big, um, whether it's small, it, it doesn't really matter, you know, but my challenge with learning is, is that I'm curious about everything. Mm -hmm. I remember when my daughter broke her, her wrist and had to get a cast. And I tell this story a lot, you know, I've never seen an arm cast before. So I was all over this. I mean, I was just in the right. middle of the experience uh -huh. you know, asking questions and, and why is it purple and, and why is it wet? And what, 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 and my daughter finally said, you know, she was a, a, a teenager. She said, mom, stop. <laughs> You're being really obnoxious right now. I'm like, but I just want to know. Right. I'm so excited. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I've almost wrecked my car uh -huh. trying to figure out what is going on over there. <laughs> what are they doing and how are they doing it? And then, you know, so I just, I get real excited about learning. Um, I, um, you know, my challenge is I need to be really strategic about it. Yes. <laughs> and, um, be a little more selective in, ensuring that I'm learning things that can help me live into, you know, my life's purpose mm -hmm. and not just all the fascinating little details about things that may or may not even be relevant to, to life and, and what is important to me. Exactly. It's, not, it's one of those like a blessings and a curse because you want to find out more, but yeah. you don't, you want to find out everything, but you can't find out everything, but you still want to find out everything. And it's like a, like a tug of, yeah, that's, I definitely agree with that. There's sometimes where I'll be doing things and I'm just like, like for me, like I really love seeing, like, I guess probably when I grew up, because when my when I was younger, my mom used to have like a fashion boutique where she'd go to different countries, get clothes and then bring back and sell them. So like for me, I guess it's seeing so cool. people, yeah, like seeing people with different clothes, like for me, it, it, like male, it doesn't like really matter what gender it is. Cause like being able to see how someone puts something together mm -hmm. and like, even though like it may not be work with me and I'm fine with it, but like, why did she pick those earrings with those heels? Or like, why did he put those shoes with the watch? Or why does he have a ring on his head? Like, you know, just like very intriguing. And then of course asking them like, hey, why? Um, and you always just find out they have a story. They're like, oh, like my grandfather, A, B, C, D, B, like this, or just like, it turns onto a whole other thing. Um, so in the past year, what, I don't want to say a failure because I don't necessarily believe in failure. I feel like failures are lessons. So what do you think is a, is a lesson that you've learned in the past year? Um, and what do you, th why, you know, like what's, what's a big lesson that you learned in the past year and why do you think it happened? And like, how did you kind of, you know, learn from that? Sure. And, and, you know, for me, there's so many opportunities every day to learn from <laughs> um, things, but you know, if, even if I think about our current environment and what's going on in the world mm. with the, the coronavirus and this, this drastic change right. that all of us are undergoing. Um, and so for, for me, I've, I've taken the last three weeks off of work. I have never, wow, yeah. ever taken three weeks <laughs> off of work. I've never taken a full two, I may have taken a full two weeks once in my 40 year career with the YMCA. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm not good at it, apparently. <laughs> So um, a couple of things have really, really caused me to, to pause and, and ponder um, as I, you know, as I get older and begin to think about retirement, um, the last three weeks have been a really, really important learning experience for me because I, I came into this with, and all of us did, right, without the, the structure that we're used to. And so when, when I'm told, you know, you need to take time from work and um, you need to keep a distance from work and keeping a distance from work is because I'm so passionate about it. It's so hard. It's so I, hard. I just, 
it's so hard for me to do. My work is just ingrained into who I am and mm -hmm. and how I operate. So to to be asked, told, to <laughs> step away and stay away without some other plan in place, I I'm in, I'm really embarrassed to say that I did not make good use of my time. <laughs> You know, in the last week I have, I've, I've, I've done some things that I'm thinking, okay, this, this is what I should have been doing all along. Right. But I've eaten things that I normally don't eat. <laughs> I've, I've watched TV, like a lot of uh -huh. TV. I've allowed myself to become isolated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, some days I just stayed in my pajamas all day mm -hmm. and it, it just made me think, okay, if I'm doing this and I, and I have just a three week window and I'm engaging this type of behavior, what is retirement going to be like if I don't have a plan? Mm. Right? Yeah. If, if I don't have the self-discipline or the structure to be able to engage in healthy behavior and healthy choices that benefit me, um, my health, my spirit, mind and body, and also in service to others, then what in the world is retirement going to look like for me? Exactly. And so that's, that's something I've got to, I, you know, I plan to retire in the next five years. Mm -hmm. I don't know when in the next five years. And, and certainly that's going to be postponed a little while because mm -hmm. of our current situation. But I need to think carefully about what my plan is going to be. I mean, I know I have some things I want to do and as it relates to travel and, but I'm going to need a little more structure than what I have provided for myself. <laughs> over the last three weeks. It's, been, it's been a learning opportunity. <laughs> or it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like that's such a big finding though. Cause like, I know a lot of people dream of like retirement and yeah. doing nothing, but until you really do like, I, I feel like everyone right now is they've been, I was talking with the other friend and even with other episodes, like when people, you know, this is a time to really come out and, you can learn a new skill. You can you can read at least one, turn the page of at least one book. Make sure you read it. Turn the page. Do walk outside. Like you can learn something because it's not like, you know, I was, I was giving the, the, the analogy of like being grounded. Like it's not like you're just grounded and everybody else is still living life. It's like, no, everybody's grounded. Like everybody's been grounded for, wow, in what is that? Nine days will be two months pretty much. So everybody's, everybody's been grounded, you know? Um, and you have the opportunity to really be able to learn and just kind of like evaluate like this is a time where you kind of think to yourself and you just said it perfectly like who am i you know who what when how why like who what you know what am i doing why like why am i doing this why am i hanging out with these people not these people why am i doing certain things that are not helping me um but it's it, it's such a very interesting time though because it's there's there was a story i was reading and then it posted about it as a, it's like a, like a pro, pro, uh, proverb, not only say proverbs. It's a proverb, uh, it's a Chinese proverb called the, um, the, the story of a Chinese farmer. He was Sai Lang Shima. So the story goes, there's a farmer, you know, he has one horse, right? And one day his horse runs away. And his neighbors come to him and, you know, they're trying to comfort him and do everything. And they said, you know, like, you know, sorry. And he says, how do you know this is not a good thing for me? And then the next day, his, the horse comes back with seven wild horses and everybody's coming and they're all congratulating and they're like, wow, this is amazing. And he tells them, how do you know this is not a bad thing for me? And then a couple of days later, his son is on one of the new wild horses, which bucks him off and he breaks his leg. Everybody comes and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry again. And so he says, well, how do you know this is not a good thing for me? And then a couple of months later, um, the, the army comes to recruit young men to fight in the army, but his son could not fight because he's you know his leg was hurt and they're like congratulating him congratulating him and then he's you know and so it's the whole story of the, the guy telling the story is alan watts and he just talks about how like we never know the consequences of something that's good or something that's bad and we look at this right now as like why me like why is this happening to me but and of course there's some people who i mean with businesses like the ones i've been talking to there's some people who've literally just been evaporated like that um, but there's some people who are even, you know, transcending and using this, but it's, it's looking at this as a time of like, we never know what this is going to be able to allow us to be able to do in the future. But if you don't put forth that action, then you'll literally never know whether it was good or bad. 
Yeah, and, and I think what, what I've discovered is I forgot to ask my default question. Mm -hmm. So my default question is always, where's the gift? Mm -hmm. You know, where, where's the gift in a situation? I just, I forgot to ask the question. <laughs> because there's such a gift in this situation. And, and I didn't realize it until, you know, during this last week when I real, when it, it, it reminded me that there's something I love to do that I haven't been doing mm -hmm. and I need to be about the business of doing it. It was actually a next door neighbor who encouraged me. You know, she said, you know, when, the, when I talked to your mom, your mom said that you love to, to watch things grow and you have a really green thumb and you love to plant and be with the, be outdoors and be with soil and, and watch things grow. And I'm like, huh, you know, you're right. <laughs> Why am I not doing that? Exactly. And so this past week I have been able to be outside and, and play nice. and um, just feel all the benefit that comes from that. So I've just got to remember to ask that default question, where's the gift? And, and the other gift in this is that now I know that I need to plan carefully for my retirement, um, that it's not going to um, be one of those situations where I just wing it. Mm -hmm. Right. I need a plan. Right. And I need to, to know what my I know what my ultimate purpose is mm -hmm. in life, but I, I need to figure out how to align that with retirement and ensure that um, I'm stepping through it in a way that's meaningful and purposeful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. With, yeah. with that, um, You've mentioned some people in your life and you know have kind of helped you, but what do you think who or what is the cause you know that's allowed you to influence others? Like what or who influenced you to be able to influence others? Well, you know, I, I always start with my parents. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was blessed with extraordinary parents. And my father was a, a very successful businessman. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, he he grew up with a learning disability and he was one of the most dyslexic people I've ever <laughs> known. And yet, you know, through his, his, um, his drive, he was able to become very successful. And, and he always had words of wisdom that, that rang true with me. And so I, I, I give my father credit for um, my work ethic mm -hmm. and for my commitment to excellence and also for my dry sense of humor. <laughs> um, and I give my mother credit for any wisdom or insight that I've been able to, to gain because she possesses both of those things in addition to tremendous amounts of grace. And so I know that I will, I will only be half of the woman that my mother is mm -hmm. because of the grace that she possesses. But she's she's long been my role model. <laughs> um, that that her ability to um, and she's she's eighty six years old and, mm -hmm. and thriving, um, and just her ability to connect with people and to see the the potential and the best in people mm -hmm. is something that I've learned from over many, many years. And then there've been mentors and role models, one in particular, um, Judy Bright, who is, uh, uh, was a long time YMCA leader. You know, as a child, I remember her seeing special things in me and, in, and especially as it related to leadership and my ability to, to lead others. I mean, she invested in my leadership development um, professionally more I would say than anyone else. And of course there have been countless others who've invested in me, but, but she really was one of the first people to see potential and then invest in that potential. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful to, to her as well. That's awesome. And, you know, making sure we're being respectful of your time where, as we finish out here, um, I guess the two questions are, what are the, you know, what's some words of advice? from 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 someone like yourself like uh, being a lighthouse to a lot of people what are some words of advice of, of everyone watching this whether they're you know they're young uh well well seasoned matured um whether they're in careers whether they're trying to get into careers whether they're in school um what are some words of advice you have you know for people well i think one of the things i've learned um is that success hinges on our ability to connect with and work with and through others. You know, um, we don't operate in a vacuum 
and the this whole idea of going it solo in terms of of identifying and reaching goals is um, it, it would just takes a lot longer right so you are surrounded by people who have amazing things to contribute to your life if you're just open to to it because it may look a little bit different than than what you were expecting mm -hmm. um, but being open to it and and seeking it um, seeking input and advice from people who are not like you mm -hmm. who don't look like you who don't have the experiences that you have who bring a fresh diverse perspective i think that's that can be really really powerful so um being able to connect with and work with others um, being okay with asking the question you know and, and and mastering the art of asking open questions so open question is something that can't be answered with a yes or a no mm -hmm. um, go ahead and, and master that art because at the end of the day that's where your greatest learnings will will come from is in the answers that you you hear from others who think differently and have different experiences than you and then just be open to you know whatever comes your way because opportunities are knocking on your door every single day and mm -hmm. it's whether or not you hear the knock or open the door but there are opportunities that surround you if you're willing to just take a look all the way around you and instead of keeping your focus so um so narrow so relationships um being seeking um, insight that's different from yours broadening your focus so that you can see the opportunities that that surround you and then just you know remembering that that life is short and um there there is no excuse for being unkind there's simply no excuse for being unkind because at the end of the day the kindness is really all that that matters and there's a there's a Jimi Hendrix quote that I love and so that you know I my default question where's the gift my default quote mm -hmm. um, when the power of love overcomes the love of power the world will know peace mm -hmm. and um, so that's that's one thing that I, I try to keep in the back of my mind on a daily basis Wow that's amazing. I'm learning, I'm like, again, I know we're not like near each other and it's amazing how we're able to talk, like, you know, the technology that we have, but really to just feel like I'm getting like a, like a one-on-one, -on -one, like counseling session right now. Um, and one of the things like, I really do. You know that you are very special to me. <laughs> I, I remember you as a child mm -hmm. and I remember thinking, you know, the first time I met you, you, you were unlike any other young person I knew in the, in the, in the YMCA environment, right? Mm -hmm because you were actually i would ask you questions and you would actually answer the question <laughs> you would actually engage in dialogue with me i was uh -huh. like astounded <laughs> you know most of the kids were too busy doing this or just you know the last thing they wanted to do was talk to an adult but you you i i could see in an instant that you were an old soul you know and and you have grown into such an amazing um, young man and I'm so I'm just so proud of you and inspired by by you and and you're only scratching the surface of what you're capable of doing right so you're you're just getting started and you're destined for great things and I'm just it's such a privilege for me to to be able to watch you grow and develop and and do amazing things for this world so I, I thank you for coming into my life that means a lot. I'm going to make sure I finish this up so I can go cry in a little bit. <laughs> no tears. <laughs> exactly. No tears. No, that really does. And it is even the same exact way like we mentioned throughout this. Like, I, and if it's okay with you, I mean, I would love to, if it's okay if I can put your, maybe how they can find you via LinkedIn or email, just because sure. having her as like a resource, um, and it doesn't matter if you're not in the YMCA, or it doesn't matter what position that you are. Like she, she said it the best, the opportunity and also perspective. Like with the Leaders Club kids that we work with, I try to tell them about perspectives and everything. So like for me, I, you know, I went to college for, you know, about a year and then I ended up leaving because at that time I had a mentor that I was doing marketing. Um, and he's been a father figure, brother to me, and we still do, still do a lot of things together. And I kind of took 
there was a time I was in class and I saw these, you know, the famous quote, two roads diverge in a path, and I chose the one that's traveled. And I remember seeing this path of college, which, you know, I knew where it ended and I knew what would happen, but then there's this path where I had no idea where it was going. It was very, very dark, like one lamp probably that I saw. And I, with my brother always told me in America, and even in the world, opportunities only come once in a lifetime and then they go away forever. So just taking that opportunity and really, you know, just kind of like diving deep into it. Um, when I talk about perspective, like now being able to you know, work with different businesses and also not only with the club that I went through at the YMCA for Leaders Club, is like being able to help them. Because um, I tell them like, even though they look at me and I'm like, oh, you know, Sushi's like the advisor, the guy who leads us. Honestly, they lead me majority of the entire time. Um, but the one thing I try to teach them is, is like perspective. Like with, there's, I've learned there's always, and I probably it's that, that hunger just to learn more. There's, there's, there's a perspective to everything. There's perspective to why when a person's driving, why do they use one hand, then two? Why do they use one left hand, then one right? Well, there's a perspective of why can I talk to this person but I can't talk to this person. Yeah. Why does this person think about me? And just the opportunity I have to like every day, like literally just show them, or well, not necessarily show them, just I guess, t- you know, take the horse blinders off and for them to kind of really see everything. Um, it's just a gift like I've just learned from watching you and just from everything that you've done. Um, and also from, you know, learning all the different, you know, the skills. And if you're watching this and if you do work at the line, you have the opportunity to take these tests, like first of all, listening first, the best, the best thing you can take, because you may think it's like a very simple thing, but it is, it's very, it's a skill that once you, it's like dancing, it's like doing the oh, waltz. Yeah. You learn it once and you will never forget it because you literally leave that door and you're like, oh, these people have been doing this to me the entire time. And like, now I know why I can talk to this person. And then you can put your own, you know, season to it. Um, so, you know, I guess what's, you know, where can people, you know, where can people be able to find you? Um, can people be able to contact you? And, and yeah. Yeah, so you can always find me at the YMCA. In fact, I, I tell people that um, at the Y is my last name mm-hmm. because when I call, I say, hey, this is Seal at the Y. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you can, you can always find me at the YMCA and that's um, C-L-C-E-I-L mm-hmm. dot Weatherman at YMCA triangle.org or seal.weatherman at gmail.com if that's awesome. that's easier for you. Um, so I, I'm always happy to talk about um, strengths. I'm a, a Gallup certified strengths coach. And so this is something I, I do professionally and uh, I really believe in it and the difference it can make in, in people's lives. So yeah, would love to, to talk to you about that or, or anything that's, that's on your mind. Awesome. So I'll make sure I put it down there and Great. that is